So in today's video, we'll be discussing the oxidative decarboxylation of pyruvate. So pyruvate is uh, one of the molecules formed from glycolysis, and pyruvate is used to form acetyl-CoA, which is eventually used in the TCA cycle or the citric acid cycle. Now, in the process of the decarboxylation of pyruvate, um, NADH is used as a reducing equivalent. NADH is uh, an electron carrier and carbon dioxide is released via a process known as decarboxylation which means the removal of a carbon and the oxidative decarboxylation of pyruvate is an important step which connects the stages of glycolysis to the stages of the TCA cycle now um, the reaction itself is catalyzed by pyruvate dehydrogenase complex and this is located in the mitochondrial matrix. So what happens is since glycolysis occurs in the cytoplasm, yeah, the pyruvate has to be transported or has to go into the mitochondrial matrix where the pyruvate dehydrogenase complex is. So the pyruvate crosses the inner mitochondrial membrane via a, uh, via a pyruvate transporter. And when it's in the mitochondria, it's converted into acetyl-CoA via the pyruvate dehydrogenase complex. So the complex itself consists of three enzymes and their corresponding cofactors. So the three main enzymes are the pyruvate dehydrogenase, otherwise known as E1 or enzyme 1. And its cofactor is thiamine pyrophosphate. The second one is dihydrolipoyl transacetylase, otherwise known as enzyme 2. Its cofactor is lipoic acid and coenzyme A. And the third enzyme is dihydrolipoyl dehydrogenase or enzyme 3. And its cofactor is FAD or NAD+. So in terms of the mechanism itself, the first thing which happens is the pyruvate is decarboxylated and carbon dioxide is released and then it forms a hydroxyethyl derivative when it binds to the reactive carbon of thiamine pyrophosphate which is its cofactor so via the enzyme pyruvate dehydrogenase it forms this hydroxyethyl thiamine pyrophosphate which is um, which is what we have here and then what happens is the hydroxyethyl intermediate then gets oxidized by the transfer to the disulfide form of lipoic acid which you can see here lipoamide you can see the two sulfur groups are here so it's transferred to the disulfide form of lipoic acid so you can see it goes through here and the reaction occurs this way and remember the the lipoamide, which is the disulfide form of lipoic acid, is covalently bound to the second enzyme of the complex, which is dihydrolipoyl transacetylase. And then what happens is it forms this compound here known as acetyl dihydrolipoamide. And then the acetyl group, which is bound onto this molecule, is transferred to coenzyme A, and this forms acetyl CoA. And then the rest of the mechanism of this de pyruvate dehydrogenase complex is the sulfhydryl form of lipoic acid is then just oxidized by the FAD dependent dihy dihydrolipol dehydrogenase and this regenerates the lipoic acid and then the FADH2 which is produced is uh, reoxidized to FAD by uh, dihydrolipol dehydrogenase and as this is occurring NAD plus is reduced to NADH so this is the basic mechanism it's a bit confusing but uh, once this uh, this stage is complete then that's all three of the enzymes which have uh, carried out their function so remember there's three main enzymes to this complex E1, which is here, pyruvate dehydrogenase, E2, dihydrolipol transacetylase, and E3, which is dihydrolipol dehydrogenase, each having their own cofactors, which I mentioned above. 
And finally, just to finish off the video, uh, the regulation of the pyruvate dehydrogenase complex. There are two regulatory enzymes which are part of the complex itself, and they activate or deactivate the first enzyme of the complex, pyruvate dehydrogenase, or E1. So the two enzymes are pyruvate dehydrogenase kinase, which phosphorylates and inhibits pyruvate dehydrogenase, E1. And the second enzyme is pyruvate dehydrogenase phosphatase, which dephosphorylates and activates pyruvate dehydrogenase, E1. So pyruvate dehydrogenase kinase is allosterically activated by ATP, acetyl-CoA, and NADH, and pyruvate itself is a strong inhibitor of pyruvate dehydrogenase kinase. So when you have high levels of pyruvate, it means that pyruvate dehydrogenase E1 is active. So remember, this is the pyruvate dehydrogenase kinase, and this inhibits pyruvate dehydrogenase. So when this is in action and it phosphorylates and inhibits pyruvate dehydrogenase, pyruvate isn't being converted to acetyl-CoA. And pyruvate dehydrogenase phosphatase de dephosphorylates and activate, activates pyruvate dehydrogenase E1. So when this enzyme is active, then you have the complex which is in action and pyruvate is being converted into acetyl-CoA. Okay, that's everything for this video. I hope it's been useful and thanks for watching.